Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Finally, I found my place where I can say how I feel about Matt. I think he's like a carny. Yes, a hundred percent. I don't think he's allowed near playgrounds. I do not <laughs> trust him. I do not like him. He creeps me out, and his food sucks. Welcome a fucking board. Another brand spanking new episode of another Below Deck podcast. My name is Dylan. I'm saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis. Ahoy, mateys. Pat, producer of the podcast over there behind my glasses. Great to be here. And joining us is our favorite person in this world of Below Deck. She is the queen of the sea. That is one Kate Chastain. How are you, Tony Oscar? <laughs> Ahoy, mateys. I took Nick's line. You're welcome. To that line, because you're not just one of my favorite people in the below deck world. You're one of my favorite people. I, I, you know, can we talk about you being welcome for stuff? Somebody posted on Facebook the other day, you saying uh, you were perplexed as to why they would name a dolphin a dolphin. Oh, I did steal that from you. I totally did. You 100% stole it from us. Oh, my God. Wait, did she say hey. it should be called a pizza? <laughs> no. This was a test, y'all. So clearly, <laughs> I listen to you. I support mm-hmm. y'all. I love your work. But I was like, you know, I wonder if they'll catch that because only if they're supportive of me. I didn't think you watched Galley Talk, which you didn't. You saw it on social. Yeah, no, I don't watch Galley Talk because okay. we'll, g- fair. we'll talk about this, but we need to negotiate an appearance. I know that it's really just alumnus and stuff like that, but you're really, I mean, you need to talk to them. We should be on that show with you. That should be the show. Yeah, just have us come in and do like little snipes or something. Maybe we yeah. come in as a like just for like a five minute segment. Yeah, and Pat would be like, I'd fuck her. And you know, no, and I wouldn't they, say that. Yeah, that would be Pat. I mean, I think you guys would be great. And honestly, I felt so guilty when I watched the cut and I saw that that made it because I had heard your latest podcast. I thought it was so clever. So I didn't mean to copy you, but I was like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And then it made it. And I was like, I hope they didn't see that. Kate, we'll write for you anytime. Anytime. Uh, I just think we should be on the payroll as official (laughs) writers. Right. And uh, but Galley Talk, people seem to be loving it. And chat room is going down the tube. So huge win for Kate. Huge win for Kate. Uh, I mean, you know. But the only reason I don't watch Galley Talk is for that very reason. I don't want to... It, God forbid one of these sea rats somehow comes up with the gold that I do. I don't want any it's too painful. conflict of interest. Not you, uh, obviously. You yeah. can have all like, our... You can have that's all, clean sea rat to you. I'm going to send you 10 <laughs> jokes. Let me know when you're recording next time. You guys. You Pro guys, bono. It was one little slip. It was a good point because I've never heard it called a dolphin either, and I've done med seasons. Well. So it was... Uh, but, I mean, everything else is all original. Okay, like you say that, but show. we'll start watching. We'll start okay. watching. Right. Um, all right, so we got to get into the show. How do you feel about the season so far, Miss Chastain? I love the season of Below Deck Med. Um, I wasn't sure at first, but um, I think the deck crew, they really uh, pivoted and swung the pendulum from like the misogynist way the other direction. They're all so sensitive, that mm-hmm. deck crew. Very, very good point. Very much so. I actually have a theory on why they did this, and I'd love to get your thoughts on it. You probably know some of the ins and outs more than I do. I think there this is a redemption tour for Malia. She's a favorite of the franchise. They eventually wanted her to be captain on one of their spinoffs. So instead of giving her the Ashtons, the who are some of them party Pete, sexually, party, party Pete. Pete, they gave her. All yeah. borderline straight to not straight guys right, who are right. going to be really easy and hardworking to make her look like a good leader. Thoughts? Uh, if it were like Riley in charge, and I love Riley. She's one of my favorite humans. Friend Seriously, of the show. Very sweet. But um, Malia doesn't have show. a problem. Intimate friend of the show. You know, Malia doesn't have a problem with guys because she does his handstands in front of them and they all <laughs> get crushes. Like, I don't think they that was a problem for Malia. Right. Well, a party Pete is a tough one to contend with. I got a question before we move forward because yeah. you know I'm not a fan of Captain Timeshare. Hold on. Could we have Kate take that again and be like, that's a great idea. I think that's what they're doing, Nick. <laughs> Actually, Nick, yeah, you're spot on. Yeah. And I might quote you on the next episode of Galley Talk Fridays at 
8, 7 central. Okay. You're Kate, welcome to it. I, at the, at the audience, the barnacles know I'm not a fan of Captain Lee, although we, I'm starting to come around on him. But Captain Sandy, I've co- completely given up on. H- has she ever tried to uh, fill your head with all her self-help uh, nonsense that it yeah. seems like it's she's really gone to like Tony Robbins seminars sure. this season? Yeah. And it's basically encompassed her entire... Yeah. Next stop, uncomfortably new veneers, you know? <laughs> I don't feel like they're new. I mean, I did, I did no, not No, I'm just saying that. her next step, her next next step in uh, self-help guru and evolution I, is uncomfortable. If, I feel like I never heard her talk like this. And then this season, it feels like everything is something she read last night in some kind of self-help gurus. Hey, book. Jewel sister. What's up, girl? I, I saw yours, so it triggered me. Um, Well, I'm sorry, guys. Were you not aware of Sandy's I Believe tour back in 2018? I mean, this is no. not a new thing for her. And also, you all trust me, right? Yeah. Um, I really like Sandy a lot. And well, I've met her. She's a very good captain in real life. Like on the show, I know like she's got she's very polarizing at best. She in real life, she's a great captain. She drives the boat very well. And she's like a cool, sweet, authentic person. I hate to burst your bubble. She's I like her. Bur- the bubble is not opinion. Kate. No, the bubble is not burst. I mean, we we trust yeah, your you opinion. Go. That doesn't mean we have to agree with you. I mean, we have eyes, hearts, well, and well, minds. Well, people probably tell Kate, especially that horrible PR person that worked at Bravo, that we were horrible. And she, Shmanda. despite that, she loved us. Kate right, loved us. Right. So maybe I maybe I have to take a second look at Captain. I don't Sandy. think you do. I appreciate Kate being an island, and despite us just tearing down the character and work ethic and abilities of her, some of her best friends in the world, <laughs> she still. <laughs> <laughs> will join us. We call them C-Rats. She loves Amanda. Oh, not, not just you. The entire internet is like, <laughs> they're. I'm not changing their opinion of Sandy. They're just liking me less. Like, <laughs> but I, you know what? I'm. I stand by it. That's a loyal friend. Uh, all right. So, uh, do we want to keep asking some questions? I'm gonna uh, until... sprinkle them in as we go through because they're starting to come in on the uh, on the feed. Here. Okay, got it. So, um. Uh, Thoughts and knots, all that stuff, or should we just jump into it? Oh, let's just jump into it. Okay, so um, we begin with Lexi thinking that it is ridiculous that she got uh, demoted. Um, you were leaving Formula 409 in people's rooms and bursting in when they're naked. Um, you're kind of you're tampering that down, uh, tamping that down a little bit. Yeah, Let's yeah, remember, yeah. she didn't just leave 409. She turned that into her broom. That's closet. true. It's completely ridiculous. <laughs> People are paying sixty thousand dollars a day. You can't turn their rooms into closets. And it's then crazy. when they try to shower in in the broom closet, you get pissed at them. Yeah. So, Kate, what would you have done if you were in Katie's situation on that first night? I know that you know you can't judge people off of one bad night, but Lexi yeah. seems. Oh, to be I can. A... I love judging people. Oh, okay, <laughs> great. Have you watched? I have her on gotten the show? that question so many times on social media from people I've seen in the real world. They're like, "What would you do with Lexi?" And for the first time, I'm like, "I have no answer." There is because there is no right answer, like for Lexi, there just isn't. I mean, I would the... ask her. Because of the quarantine and, and stuff okay. like that. Pardon? Is it because of quarantine that you would be in a more of a pickle? Because if you could just get somebody else on, wouldn't you just shit can her? Oh yeah, I, I would fire her. But I thought people meant like besides fire her, how would you manage her? But yeah, oh. I would fire her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say something controversial. Kate, you're a you're you got the check mark, so you can't say anything about this. But we can. Yeah. Uh, I really feel like if Lexi was white, she would have been fired. Okay. I feel they're afraid to fire her. For being called racist, because we they discussed that on the season. Yes, 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 yes. That's I, I just wanted to put that out. No, she's it's okay. a horrible person. Listen, she says she's Satan. That hot take sprung from my loins. You know, I, I wanted to soften it a little bit by saying that you know Sandy is very aware of cancel culture and is afraid of it because she thinks she's a celebrity and she's not. But you know, um, yes, I think that it has, has a part to play. Mm-hmm. It does so. Moving on, uh, we begin. If you ever want to agree with us, but you don't want to say anything, hit your jewel. Well, that's not. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So uh, the person who is muddying up the aforementioned ranks is a young woman named Delaney. Um, frankly, I'm a little disgusted in our fans. You know, we saw a lot of chatter going, oh, I bet the boys are going to be ripping on this one. We're not going to make fun of things like speech impediments, Dylan, okay? Dylan, you're... 
We make fun of voluntary plights like sexual orientation or mental illness. We're not going to go after her for this. You're taking the words out of my mouth. Yeah. I, we learn about Delaney's uh, past or basically her upbringing or childhood. I was writing notes that she talked through her teeth closed and it was very distracting. I was going to have some fun with it. And then she tells us pricks like me ruined her childhood. And I realized, well, that's not going to work out. Yeah, for yeah, me. yeah. You said something very specific, though, uh, Dylan. You weren't going to allow uh, involuntary disabilities or whatever. Mm -hmm. She admitted to, yes. to worsening the disability so she could skip second grade yeah. it was so short sighted for some Cheerios and extra recess time that's ridiculous the I, am, <laughs> I am gonna rip on her and it's called roticism when you uh, uh, you cannot say your R's and you say W's, my nephew Charlie has it, but he, unlike this woman, is working hard to improve it. Right, all right? right, right, right. I think it's disgusting what she did, <laughs> especially you're going to go into media studies. What a genius maneuver. We're talking about uh, PC culture. And right, not, right, right, right. Uh, like, that'll only help her. They're like, oh, you have a speech impediment? You're going to be the anchor on the evening news. Right, right, right. Your yeah. thoughts, Kate? <laughs> His name's Charlie? Yeah. And he can't say ours. <laughs> I know. I if only you could I wait mean, till you hear children speak before you name them. I okay. True yeah. or false? Um, aren't girls with lisps kind of hot though? Or like you know, it's kind of like or like a little speech something. It's like I you know I hadn't thought about it, but I, you know Nick bringing up her. Roticism. Her myopia at seven. I just can't get over that. You know the short sightedness of that little child. It's just it's too much. I can't. I can't even think about how attractive she is. I'm so appalled by her gypsy-like fucking scam. Um, but yeah, Delaney, I'm, I'm just very, very confused about this whole hiring thing. Um, see well, it was uh, Captain Sandy. She didn't do her due diligence. So, so you, we, we didn't want to ask if the person you're sending over know how to fold towels. Yeah, so the Sea Rat hiring and firing and Sea Rat life continues to be one of the most perplexingly nonsensical things I've ever seen. I don't understand why people are hired and fired um who who was the the gypsy who was uh dumping cold corn on nachos what i mean what is going on in Mila. this world Mila. why the russian spot why is this person hired despite having no experience whatsoever well she was hired to, with experience as a deckhand i know but i'm asking kate oh. was she's brought on to fold laundry why in god's name was she brought on to do that i mean at this stage anyone will do if you anyone can fold towels we're hoping i mean even chef mila could have not that she would have but i you know they don't need somebody a small yay on board they just need someone to transfer from the washer to the dryer all right um yeah so she can learn laundry is the thought um but what about the crippling resentment and unhappiness uh you know poisoning this overqualified employee it's just it's very short-sighted but anyways um we'll talk about her a little later i think the most important thing is that she wants to be on tv v. 100%. <laughs> so the towels oh. <laughs> i think she's gonna be fine what she did at the tail and not to get ahead of myself was right. machiavellian right. Uh, you're fired hey wait a minute whoa 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 whoa, whoa. turn the lisp to 11 <laughs> <laughs> whoa 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 what are you giving me that face for i was just looking at nick's cute dog all right sorry i found out uh so we we yeah. quickly mentioned folding towels i would be remiss i had to bring this up uh, up to kate how about the vindication after jeff bezos launched the rocket that was modeled after your rocket towel thoughts i know i love to say i told you so even if it comes seven years later yeah you know I don't Thank know. You. Deep cut for the audience. Kate used to pull <laughs> towels to make it look like a dick. It's not that deep cut. I uh, mean, Kate, I, have you brought any uh, cease and desists or anything? Are you guys in a legal feud or anything no, like that? No, actually, it's all happening in my hometown. So I, I'm pretty sure that like all I have to do is be like, watch season two, episode two, and I'm going to work for him. You yeah. know, well, and just just a little bit more space talk. Are you going to go to the launch of Artemis one this fall? Okay. That's pretty exciting. NASA <laughs> okay. getting getting their rocket program. Back. Uh, if any, if I Jeff mean, Bezos takes course. another flight, sorry. I mean, my, so Colonel Bellows on I Dream of Genie, based after my grandfather. My dad was a scuba diver for NASA. At this, I mean, launches for us, they're not, I mean, people fly in, but it's kind of like not that big of a deal. Yeah, of course I'm going. <laughs> uh, well, that hurts because NASA is finally getting back into the space program. They haven't done it for a while. So uh, well, I think you should look into Artemis 1. I think you all should. I talked to a PR person from NASA the other day and I have a lot of knowledge. Hey, can I do three meanwhiles? 
Yes. Well, first, yeah. we, we need, uh, your first meanwhile is going to be Sandy telling Katie in front of the new employee that it's her decision whether or not she wants to come on board. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you about that kind of leadership and thought leadership. It's one of the most painfully awkward things I've ever seen on this show. Sandy, yawn. What's going on with this, this call? Uh, can you break it down a little bit? Well, yeah, she basically says, well, we learned that she has no experience on boats actually uh, doing anything on the interior, but because she graduated college, so I'm pretty sure she'll pick up pretty quickly the tasks of laundry, making beds, uh, washing towels, and doing the dishes. Right. So then she leaves it to Katie. So you you figure this out. I know I made a ridiculous phone call where I didn't ask any questions. Then I brought someone on the board that would be a grenade within the infrastructure of, uh, of this yeah. business by... Uh, lessening the tips for everybody, also moving everybody's bunks and yeah. uh, dislocating everybody. Right. But now you, <laughs> you figure this out. Kate? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll, Pat. Boast and Pat. Expert Captain Boast and Pat. It was so much sea time and so much time working on a yacht. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sandy, I feel like in your mind, is like damned if she does, damned if she doesn't. You know, she's like, oh, so Sandy decided for her, totally took her you know, authority for her interior team away from her. Like there is no right answer for Sandy in your mind. I mean, Sandy's letting Katie decide because Sandy's focused on driving the boat. Katie knows her interior and this is Katie's job. Like, honestly, if I were the chief stew, I'd rather the captain be like your decision. Cause if the captain makes a decision, I'm like, you're in the wheelhouse. What do you care? That's fine. But I don't think, you know, once Lee is done, playing fruit ninja he puts his phone down and he comes to you and says i just beat my high score also we're thinking about bringing somebody else on it's your call that's done in private and also ad nauseum we've already had this conversation why do you need to bring the sea rat up to what do you call this fucking bridge. room? The bridge. Why do you need to bring the sea rat in front of the lead sea rat to decide the sea rat's fate? It's very fucking awkward. It's bad leadership. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's so that the lower sea rat knows that, you know, this was a call from the captain. It wasn't the chief sea rat saying, making an excuse or a lie like, oh, it's the captain's captain. Let me decide. But, you know, it was her idea. Like okay. the captain's just, you know. You know, it's All kind right. of fair. I, Kate, what? don't you think there should be more thought put in when you're going to invite an extra employee on the boat that's going to affect everybody's money? I, I think there just should have been a lot more thought. Nick has that. thoughts. Nick has thoughts. Uh, I just, oh, I would have fired Lexi right away. There like, you go. I would have been like, let's one day try out. She's got a better attitude. She hasn't like pissed off the entire crew. And uh, she's doing the job and she's not taking naps, eating chips, leaving caddies, throwing sass. Saying the 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 guests smell uh, out loud. I have to say, Kate. Once again, I respect your loyalty and uh, career management networking skills to not talk shit about Captain Sandy. But she should have told Katie that in private. And you, but you do bring up a good point because if Katie did do it in private, she would have talked to Delaney and she would have been like. Captain Sandy says we can't keep you. I'm sorry. It's um, not my cho choice. All right, we got to move on. I got to do three meanwhile. Yes, do meanwhile, the three meanwhile. Chef Spaz is annoyed by the preference sheet. Meanwhile, yes. Katie chats with Court to comfort her because she's crying. Right. Meanwhile, Deckhand Dave continues to believe he's into women. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> do you think David and Lloyd are a perfect match, Kate? I think they should date. I think they're quite darling, but I think we've seen this before on previous seasons where there's like kind of a bromance, bromance. and you're kind of wondering if it's more than a bromance. Um, my dad calls it muskrat love when your or guys are like trapped out on a boat for too long. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's Ashton what Ang Ross, Lee wanted to Jack. call that movie. Uh, there's Pardon? a song called Muskrat Love by uh, Captain Antonio. Yeah. The working title for Brokeback was Muskrat Love. Ooh, um, that's the one at sea. Yeah. Yeah. You said Ashton and Ross. Uh, Ashton they, they, and Ross gave me some pretty, you know. Muskrat vibes. Muskrat vibes. Um, and then, like, even on the med, that Jack guy who's so hot and Scouser. somebody else, like, they were, like, brokenhearted when one got a boyfriend or, or girlfriend or something. Oh, you know, it's very, very Travis. similar because Travis did swing both ways and the Scouser was British and didn't. And mm -hmm. super cool, so probably bangs guys. We've right. always talked about how cool. oh, that's the pinnacle of cool. Bisexuality yeah, is yeah. the pinnacle uh, of cool. Okay, yeah. quick question. Have you heard from <laughs> Ashton or Ross? No, no, not a chance. Well, I mean, I, I, I have Ashton blocked on pretty much everything. Ross, Good. Ross, 
Ross will FaceTime me at like three in the morning about once every five months. Good, <laughs> good, good, good. That, he, that sounds about right. I got a late night DM from him. He's like, bro, I got a story for you. When can we talk? And I was like, yeah, like let's talk. And then <laughs> we didn't hear from him. But okay. <laughs> All right. So really quickly about Matt and his uh, complaining about the dietary restrictions. It's so funny, like really good chefs, they do not give a fuck. You know, they they are working in metropolitan areas. Gluten sensitivity is swimming all around them. It's the new normal. It's don't worry about it at all. We'll fix it for you. It's fucking pizza cookers in Ohio and people like Matt who have huge problems with mm-hmm. this, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Finally, I found my place where I can say how I feel about Matt. I think he's like a carny. Yes, a hundred percent. I don't think he's allowed near playgrounds. I do not <laughs> trust him. I do not like him. He creeps me out, and his food sucks. <laughs> There's a clip. There's a show, social clip. Uh, but but uh, I agree. And let's. I mean, I know you're going to defend her, but how about Sandy putting this new woman who can't say her R's in a cabin with him? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Sandy. Yeah, that is that is fish in a barrel. I mean, God Listen, forbid. It's called life. I had to share a cabin with a 55 year old Russian engineer, and it was not pleasant. I mean, you just move forward. You and know? Leon for a while. God, that was that's true. That was yeah, awful. I mean, get over it. All right. Hey, are we going to talk about Courtney coaching up Delaney? Um, no, I have a note on that. Okay. So, uh, Courtney starts coaching her up and, and we learned that she was a valedictorian yeah. of her class. And then I was thinking, then how did you become a sea rat? And then I thought being a sea rat doesn't mean you're dumb. It means your father was an alcoholic and he beat your mother. Right. Kate, <laughs> except for Kate, right. Kate. No, I just, um, want, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Right. <laughs> uh, I remember our very <laughs> first time we had Kate on. Kate had, she had expressed how I was like her favorite in terms of just like listening to us and stuff. And then I offended her by, by saying just a yachty or something. And then we were like butting heads the rest of the time. And I was like, I was so sad, but we've, we've mended those fences. And now, now he just ruined that fence. Oh no, no. And then Dylan offended me another time. And I think, I mean, I'm sure Patrick has, I mean, that's part of like, you know, our banter. Kate, the first time we met, you walked up to me and you said, are you the one that called me a bitch? Yeah, that's true. And, and he was he was the one that said that so we have yeah. to move on and um, then i was jealous because kate and kate and uh dylan wanted to go out and smoke cigs together and i didn't, I didn't smoke cigarettes but uh, i was like I, and that's when you started yep. <laughs> we're trying to get off this planet quick me and kate we know what we're doing so lexi at one point says um why doesn't katie just demote herself what are you fucking thinking um all right so the huggers arrive at lady michelle i love these bitches they seem young and hot and demanding and it, I, they just seem like they're gonna be a really really fun time oh it's gonna be fun and yeah. you know who couldn't be happier about it at, at this moment some math here there are eight female crew members Dave. And now we got eight no 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 oh. we got eight guests Sandy's a fucking kid in a candy store. This is this is Charlie Sheen at a strip club with a bucket of Bolivian J. I mean, I could literally see her elongated labia poking out of the top. You of have her pants. to stop talking about her labia. You have to. You absolutely fucking have to stop. Talking <laughs> I agree about with her Dylan. Labia. I think you should stop talking about that because um, we need. To... Have you seen Captain Sandy's girlfriend? Yeah, she's hot. She's so gorgeous. I think I don't think Captain Sandy's looking at anybody else. She's pretty into her girlfriend. Yeah. Talking about fucking bat wings and shit. You have to stop. What a fucking baller. Jesus. Captain Christ. Sandy is. All right. Okay, sunglasses inside. Calm down. We have to talk about um Courtney really stepping into her role. She finds one of these drunks hanging off the side of the boat, shaking her ass, and says, rightly. Hey, what's going on here? Can you not while we're fucking going at 15 knots? It's very, very unsafe. You could fall down and get hacked to pieces by the myriad blades underneath this vessel. Yeah, I have to. Uh, I <laughs> Great use of myriad. Is that was the fist bomb? I don't know or? if it was. Uh, but honestly, I was pretty impressed by Courtney. I mean, that that's stepping up. She yeah. Didn't, she didn't have to do that. She's interior. I would have let that bitch fall off the boat. <laughs> I'm always impressed by Courtney. I love Courtney. I love Courtney too. And uh, even more impressive, she might be uh, by the end of the season setting the record for sea rat breakdowns. No one cries alone more than Courtney. Yeah. Kate, have you oh, worked with any of these lot. people before? No, 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 no. Um, no. Uh, Why'd Captain you say Sandy it like did that? Did ask me to come work with for her. Um, 
like a few years back, but yeah. hmm. no, I haven't. Yeah, but you knew to not work for her. So anyways, um, it's revealed that Delaney interviewed as a deckhand. Her CV is all deckhand, but most importantly, like we said, she really, really wants to be on TV. Um, I don't know what's really going on here. Berkeley, psychology, media studies. Um, yeah, it's just, it's very, very confusing to me, her her sudden appearance on this show. Um, is it? She's a redheaded psychology major. I know, but I, I, I like what you said. I, I don't like to judge a book by its cover. Right. But if it says redhead who studied media studies at Berkeley, I'm not, I don't like that book. I'm not going to read that book. Right, 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 right. God. I, would, I messed it up. It could have been a harder punchline. I would have got a laugh. I feel like <laughs> What's, you're doing great, dude. <laughs> oh no, I've been you're doing. Good. I've been doing really well all, all day. I, I know that. <laughs> it was so good. I was just trying to think of a better one. That's why I was quite, like. Quiet. All right, okay. so uh, <laughs> let's get to lunch. I, I I feel like he's saying I'm not doing good. What? No, I, I just said you're doing great. <laughs> Are I, we going to be more awkward about this? Do you want to keep talking about your performance on this here live podcast? Yeah. It was or a, can we move on? It was an A plus plus, okay. and it just got. Knocked down to an A plus. Okay, so seventy knots, Nick. Uh, I think that's about On right. On a scale of sixty five. Let's get to lunch. We have a deconstructed blat with a ranch right up Nick's alley. Um, Dylan, what? I need to talk to you about Matt's food right now. All right, let's talk about it. Everything they're just called ingredients, you <laughs> asshole. Well, they're, they're deconstructed things that are deconstructed inherently, so you can't yeah. deconstruct. A, a caprese. A caprese. You cannot deconstruct a cob. It's already a platter of shit on top of one another. I mean, it's just, it's already deconstructed. We talked about it. Constructed caprese would be better. Culinarily I do, innovative. I would do it like a watermelon feta salad where they do the very even cubes and they do it like a checkerboard, except I would do that with the tomato. I mean, you know, make there it beautiful go. and perfect. Perfect. Right, right, right. He doesn't have the knife skills for that. I, I hate this guy more than both of you. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but when he almost lit himself on fire, I'm like, this will be very entertaining. Okay. I hope he fucking burns uh, if it wasn't going to take down the entire vessel. Okay, so here's the thing with me and lunch. Uh, the lunches have been, as the dinners have been as well, but the lunches are especially chuggy bullshit. I'm thinking of just retiring food reviews for lunch, uh, unless something really strikes my fancy or tickles it, I should say. I don't know what I'm doing here, talking about fucking blats and sandwiches. It's your job, dude. Caprese and surf and turf. <laughs> Every That's all fucking doing. night. 50 pots. So um, the girls head out for drinks while Matt tries to burn the boat down. Um, the noises of his pain are so creepy. Um I know I really don't ever give him a fair shake, <laughs> but when he burns his hand and he's like, oh, oh. Have I ever told you guys about the mason jar video? No. Kate, have I ever told you about the mason <laughs> jar video? I am I'm dying to hear. Tell okay, me, so there are these videos that go around the internet when you're uh, you know, high school kid. You always have that one friend that shows you the fucked up stuff. Cake and, farts. And there was cake farts, stuff like that. Two girls, one cup. There hey, was, give me a clot too. There was one particular video where uh, it was just a mason jar set against a beautiful angelic white background. And then all of a sudden you see an old scrotum kind of come into the top of the frame. And it is a man and he has his uh, anal cavity spread a football length wide and a uh, football field wide. What am I saying? He has his anal cavity spread so, so open, and he sinks down and swallows the mason jar with his, uh, with his butt. Mm. And then uh, it's a really impressive feat, but then as he uh, you know, lurches himself upward, uh, things contract and the mason jar pops uh, inside of his butt. And slow droplets of blood start to kind of run down his legs, and you just hear him go, mm -hmm. and... It reminded me, me it reminded of me Matt. Chef's fast. Reminded me of Matt. Oh. Uh -huh. I haven't told you guys about the Mason jar video. No, but I'm so glad that you did. So uh, he reassures Sandy that this is not a knee situation. We know. Ugh. Shut up. It never was a knee situation, you little bitch baby oh, chef. All right. but, but he meant by... Carney. He was admitting his fault there, though. By knee situation, he made he meant made up injury fueled by my anxiety and inability oh, to cook. Oh, the grown man gets bonus points for admitting he lied about an injury that <laughs> caused the whole crew money tips. 
time, energy. Oh, yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I like how he acts this like- This isn't that, Sandy. The, don't worry. He has the bravado of like he's a fucking hero for pushing through this. It's like, hey, dude, you ever watch the sh show Chopped? People burn their fucking fingers on there. I've seen a couple people fucking chop their fingers off. They go to the dessert round. Right, exactly. You have to go to the dessert round. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I've cut my finger down to the bone, and I kept making beds. I- mm -hmm. the Season four, I practically cut my entire Achilles heel off, and we just powered through. I still can't wear loafers on my right foot. How'd okay? you do that? Uh, there's like some metal hanging off the stairs going out of the crew mess, and it sliced it. Oh my god! If sea rats disgusting. were more litigious, uh, they'd all be millionaires. Because oh, yeah. I think that's <laughs> honestly, I think that's why we always uh, film in foreign countries. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, yeah. so um, Doctor T heads on over to the boat. Um, she may not be Darian, but this woman is a star. Her name is Dr. T. She has a cool, calm disposition, and she diagnoses this as a second-degree burn, um, to which Matt says, I can't quit because of this. Well, yeah, obviously you can't quit. You burned your middle finger. You put a fucking glove on it. Keep I making chicken parmesan. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> um, all right. So dinner is up next. We have bacon wrapped dates, the TGI Fridays of upscale apps. We also have chicken parm, gnocchi Alfredo, and Matt's favorite, tomatoes and cheese. <laughs> uh, um, Deconstructing your price, Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it 27 pots. I am getting fatigued. <laughs> I just like him. With oh, what it, happened? It died. Uh hey, Kate, while we're having technical problems, can I, uh, the barnacles have a couple questions for you? Yeah, let's hear them. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, Ali Harms, uh, what do you miss about yachting the reality TV show stuff, and what does what do you not miss about? The okay, shut the show? fuck up, Ali. Let's uh, get back. Okay, I miss. I do miss the travel. It was a very cool way to see the world by yacht. Uh, when the guests aren't on board and you're underway, or even when they are, um, it's it's really quite gorgeous. Um, and actually, there is a cool camaraderie that happens with your crew, and it's very cool. Um, when you don't have such strong Wi-Fi and you're so busy working, you forget about social media. It's like a total mental reset. Uh, what I don't miss is how much, it's so much work. It seems like it. I, I always feel bad for the crew when I see the shots of them, like washing dishes at 2.30 in the morning after they just served everybody all day long. It's like, I don't care if you're getting eight hours sleep. That's like exhausting. You're on your feet all day. Oh, I mean, I was never getting eight hours of sleep. It's not even like the... That's, that's hard, but what's really difficult is that it's day after day after day. Like, there's really zero days off. And then on, on this particular season, it seems like more, they're not having a day off in between charters. Is that they're going out, getting fucked up, coming home at 3, waking up at 8, and the people come on at noon. Is that pretty ready? No, no, no. They, that's just um, for the sake of editing for the show. I mean, there there's always a day off, but you're, you're still working, but you're also doing the interviews. Uh, right. But it's it's still a really long day. You're it doesn't. I fucking hate technology. So it's too, uh, it's too hot in here, no. Peters. Can you uh, so turn down your uh, brightness on Fine. your screen? That's like one thing that will keep it cooler. Can you can you do that? I don't have to. I don't know technology. You gotta be fucking kidding. Um. So. Katie comes down, tells Matt, despite the objective horror of what you put out, they love it. And They're he, starving. And he goes, really? They didn't say is the chef phoning in because he burnt his finger? Hang on. Do we still have her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, cool. Ugh, this guy, he just needs some, you know what? He's so smarmy. That's the word to describe him, right? He's smarmy. Yeah. So when she says that they loved the food, um, it, the smarminess just oozes out of him. He's like, really? They didn't say, is the chef phoning it in because he burnt his finger? And Katie just completely ignores it. She's like, what's for dessert? <laughs> uh, it is a store-bought cake. Store-bought 
Kate, you there? Yeah, I'm here, but I'm afraid to say anything how I feel about Matt. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm really impressed. It's the most impressed I've been with Katie is when she's finally like losing her patience with Matt. I'm like, there's, there's my girl. Get a girl. Um, all right. So Sandy gets news that Delaney and Matt can legally not sleep with one another in the same bunk. Um, you know, <sighs> You're you're welcome to come aboard, but asking you know, there there starts to be a mutiny here, uh, a mutiny of public opinion. You know, the sea rats are are kind of saying you're welcome to come aboard and and cut our our tip down, but you know if they're having to move bunks in the middle of a charter, I, you know you are as good as gnawed down to the bone by these fucking people. You know these new buddies are going to turn against you if they have to move all their bunks in the middle of a goddamn charter. What's crazy about this is you barely spend any time in those bunks. Right? I mean, you're working on your fucking feet all day. It is literally the place where you put your head down so you can take a break until you're back up scrubbing the deck again. It doesn't seem like... My point is... <laughs> birthday cake! This cheap fuck! So, Kate, how, um, how much of an impossibility is it to move everyone's bunks in the middle of a charter? Uh, it's hideous. It's awful it's the worst case scenario honestly i feel like this whole no co-ed uh bunk thing if i were the chief too i'd be like you know what tell the management company i feel like that's um politically incorrect because they, some of them actually identify as they oh nice so, you know i would just be like let's let's reconsider that y'all Right. See, that's thinking on your feet right there. That's why Kate made the big bucks. That's why she's the queen of the sea. I would have pulled that audible right there and I would have shut that fucking management company down. Problem solved. Yeah. And also you got to think about Marvin too, you know, who has to now room with Matt, the guy who cried to him and apologized after he spent the night ripping down GoPros. You know, that's just not, that's not good for anybody. Um, yeah, and also you got to think about the fact that we're, listen, we do the job because you're with a bunch of traveling single people that pretty much drink alcohol and hook up with each other. Like no one really has a problem with a co-ed bunk. I prefer it because they spend the guys spend less time in the bathroom. Like this management company, they, they don't know what they're doing. Um, all right. So Matt continues to mope about his finger. He says, uh, Courtney asks him on a scale of one to 10. What is it? He says it's an 11. <gasps> <sighs> Have you ever tried to, to piss out a crystal or been shot in the stomach, Matt? Huh? Either one of those things? You know what I mean? Or giving birth to a baby? Or yeah, exactly. Without crying like a little bitch? Have you ever pushed out a human and had your taint ripped from vaginal cavity to butthole? Because that happens, I mean, Matt, and that's an 11, okay? Pigeon. You know what disgusts yeah. me about uh, him? And it only came up in like, no, it came up in two episodes. We're him going so hard on him tonight. Him talking about his sex life and dropping 150 K on sex workers or some shit like that. Like who's fucking this guy? Well, paying, uh, paying That's clients. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, think exactly. he has 150,000. Uh, so I'd have sex with him for 150 grand. I would too. I'm not even sure I would. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's get to the next day. Next morning. Sandy heads on over to Katie and says, hey, I'm not doing anything. Boat's parked. You want to have another chat? To which Katie says, okay, yeah, 150,000th. Um, let's go do it. So Sandy's employee says, I don't want to keep this woman on. To which Sandy replies, ask her if she wants to stay on this television show. And if she says yes, you've got to move every single person into a new room. Brilliant leadership. And, and uh, bring out that calculator for the tip meeting. Because yeah. you're going to need it. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, here's what, listen, I'm going to defend Sandy one more time because here's my thing. I've had stewardesses that were just as bad, if not worse, than Lexi. At this point in the season, Katie knows what she's working with it should there should never have been a complaint about service or anything because you know that's why you get up and you like there's katie needs extra help i've never gotten a fourth too yeah i guess i'm just i'm just blown away by this whole thing it's crazy so um maureen's death is a sad one and shows a real sense of humor 
among the staff, you know, joking about this inflatable thing like it's a dog. I had a completely different take. Okay. Uh, make the shows shorter if you don't have the goods. I don't need five minutes of this fluff. Got it. Um, all right. So the rain is coming down in the form of water and the staff's complaints about moving six people around. And this causes Katie to vomit. Um, <clears throat> I... I just feel so bad for her. She's so stressed out. Um, she's no queen she of the sea. She cares too much. She cares too much. So what would you have done? You would have just said, everybody get your shit out of your no, rooms and move? she said she would have fired if on the first day she saw that this new girl was doing great. She'd say, Lexi, uh, you're on the next plane back to wherever the fuck you came from. Right. Okay. That's management you know right there. Saying. You try to please everyone, you end up pleasing nobody. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, she pulls, Katie pulls Delaney up to the bridge and says goodbye, to which Delaney says, I want to be on TV, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a problem here. I really respected Delaney in this moment. Like, Katie was giving her the old, it's not you, it's us, you know, you're great. Um, you're going to find another boat. And Delaney's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've been doing my job, ho. So this is going to be uncomfortable conversations. But, right. Uh, yeah. I'm sticking around, so suck it up. Well, the end of the episode kind of ends in a, a storm of sorts. But do you have any final thoughts? She was just like, I'm a woman and I have a disability. Good fucking luck. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right. So that ends our recap with the Queen of the Sea, Kate Chastain. Hey, Kate, do you want to uh, tell us anything that would um, spoil the entire season for anybody listening? <laughs> I mean, of course I do, but I, I can't. They'll have to watch Galley Talk Fridays at 8, 7 Central on Bravo TV. And uh, Kate, where can people follow you? You have legions of fans and you should have even more. Uh, they can follow me at Kate underscore Chastain on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, my dog Halo is now the star of Galley Talk. And so he's got a dog named Halo. We're really trying to get him that, you know, Purina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He if, deserves if, it too. If Halo, who seems to be doing pretty well on the social media, I'm going to be honest, Chewy, though, being despite being cute, has struggled to get some traction. If Halo wanted to maybe repost Chewy, yeah, um, you guys do a collab. For fellow dog lovers, Chewy would not be pissed. Uh, Pat, do you oh, have no any... problem, but you know what? I don't know if Chewy's going to agree with this. You know what Halo has finally realized? I wish he realized it sooner. He's a troll. If anybody <laughs> talks any shit on my Instagram, my cute little 12-pound <laughs> Havanese dog, he goes in. He's like, uh, hey, Joe Blow, I'm neutered and I've got bigger balls than you. Like, Halo is nasty. Right. Right, right, right. I hey. think that is a lot of Chewy's problem. He's too vanilla online. He's not really mixing up like that. He needs a little bit more bite like Halo. They should talk. Maybe maybe Chewy will pay for a consult from Halo. Have the has the government approached you guys about your um your sentient animals? Uh, no. Uh, we're trying to keep it under wraps, but I guess we're not. What, you're on social what kind of animal was that? I think I said the wrong word, but regardless, they're uh, terrifying creatures that uh, use their non-opposable thumbs to troll people on the internet. One last question, and this pertains to Halo. Francie Clark wants to know, hey, Kate, Queen of the Sea, you gonna get another dog to keep Halo company? Uh, yeah, maybe eventually, but really that sounds like more trouble for me, so he's fine. Yeah. Uh, the same list... You always struck me as a cat person. I knew it. You would be. <laughs> hey, I, I have no idea what this is, but the same listener, I have one last question. The audience loves well, this. I'm cutting all of them. So saying last question, to, uh, like it's just. Well, this might be good. Hey, uh, have you ever listened to Adrian's podcast? Why on earth doesn't she like you? I don't even know who Adrian is. Oh, this, she's so nuts. Like I've never really met her, um, but everybody from the first season of production, uh, past everybody was like so what was she like and they all said the same thing like with this very strange like she's just a psychopath and like I I thought they could use better descriptions but she really is uh, shameless and boundless in her lies she like went on she said something like the reason I didn't like her was about some guy like like that was ever an issue would have been an issue if it were true you know Mm. So, I agree. So I, she does a below deck podcast. We'll need to take her out, Kate. We've taken everybody out. Oh, I don't think you guys have to worry about her. I mean, at all. Hmm. Well, no, we won't worry because we will execute her her IP. Her podcast. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, she's doing. She'll 
do it to herself, just like she did her first season of Blow Duck. I want to have her on our show and just talk about how much we love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure she already knows because she listens to everything. And She's like the crazy ex-girlfriend of Chief Stews. This woman's season one Below Deck original, and she just started a podcast on it. Give it up, woman. All right. Well, love you. We do. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Um, we'll talk yeah. to you very, very soon. Everyone, watch Galley Talk. You will find a lot of our hilarious material repurposed by Kate. And it's just a great show. Support Kate in everything that she does because she is the queen of the sea and this show. We love you. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Nick, say goodbye. Goodbye. Pat, say goodbye. Bye, guys. Kate, say goodbye. <laughs>